going on everyone back at it again or well sort of the electricity is out right now and it couldn't have come at a better time because i'm getting ready to do a bunch of stuff before i go on a business trip next week and i was trying to tie up some loose ends but of course when i get home from work today there's no electricity so it's kind of hard to do the things that i wanted to do so what we're going to do is we're going to head on outside and do something that i've been putting off for a few days what up fellow cheapskates, you know how I get down. I drive past the house last week and I see these aquariums sitting out in their trash. I take them for myself because with a little hard work, we get them looking brand new. Not to mention that we got this awesome bikini bottom scape down in the blue ball spec along with the whole gang. We got SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, and Gary. He's dead. Now the aquariums are on and good, I'm starving, so I'm gonna go get something to eat. Hopefully by the time I come home, the electricity will be back on, but back in just a second. And let there be light, the electricity has finally returned, and truth be told, this is actually two days later, but as you can see, there is a total mess going on around me. And the reason it's got so messy, plain and simple, I have so many projects going on that keeping my room clean has not been a priority over the projects. But I want to get the room really clean before I start doing my general tank maintenance, such as water changes and whatnot. And I want it to be clean whenever I'm not here, just so that people aren't tripping over stuff and they can take care of my stuff easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cleaning. So now we can begin doing some maintenance on all of my aquariums. I like to start out with the 150 here, simply because it's the largest. It takes slightly more time than the other setups, although it's relatively clean right now. I just have to do a slight gravel back down in here, and then we'll change the water, of course. So let's clean it out. Process is quite simple. First, I unplug the heaters. Then I turn this ball valve on my sump pump. Then I unplug the sump pump, and then I just Peel back the lids here. Got two discharge buckets down here and my gravel vac. I will probably fill up about a bucket and a half of old water. And all I'm gonna do is just stick this down in the tank. There we go. With this tank, it's very rare that I actually have to gravel vac the sand just because the layer is so thin that nothing's really building up on it and uh, the flow is pretty good, so nothing really to speak of with that, but down in these plants, it tends to get in there for whatever reason. So, every now and again, I gotta just come in here and clean it out like this. Sometimes I'll take the plants out completely and then uh, rinse them off, grab back the sand that was under them, but I'll probably only do that every few months. I'm always looking for this guy whenever I'm doing the gravel vac because I don't want to hurt him. And I didn't see him so I figured he was hiding out in the back. But there's actually a fish in the sand here. I don't know if you can notice him. I'll give you a second. He's actually right here. Let me get the sand off of him. This here is my banjo catfish. As you can see he's missing his right fin. And I actually bought him out of pity. He was a bit of a rescue pet. I saw him at a fish store and he just was missing his fin and there was like a bone sticking out. I'm guessing that whenever they're trying to net another fish in the tank, he got caught by the net up against the glass and I felt bad for him, but he's grown significantly since then. I think he's a pretty enjoyable fish and uh, like, like you saw, he just kind of blends in with the sticks among the bottom, but why don't we let this guy go because he's not enjoying me handling him right now. 
One of the things that I like best about this aquarium is that it's really easy to maintain. And you never want to be struggling to maintain your aquariums in the first place, but water changes are a breeze, unless of course I have to do a gravel back like you just saw. What I have here is a standard pool filter tube, and I just attached it onto that quick release PVC pipe. So I've got a drain in my floor here. I'm just gonna take this little cap off and stick this tube down in there. So all that I'm gonna do is just turn this guy. It's gonna drain my aquarium in a matter of minutes. As the aquarium is draining, I'm just gonna come down in here, get a standard Brillo sponge. I'm just gonna clean off the inside of the tank. I'm gonna drain it down to probably about here. And that about does it pretty much in the time that it took me to go around and scrub off the entire tank. It's basically drained to where I want it to go. I'm gonna let it go down to there. So it's roughly about a 50% water change or so. Keep in mind that there's also about 35 gallons of water down in the sump. So it's not 50% of the entire system, but of the volume of the tank, it's roughly 50%. So just come back in here. Shut off the ball valve and it's all good. Now we'll move on to my goldfish tank here and it follows the same procedure. Have to unplug the filter, then we'll hook up a hose. I'll put it down to the level I want to drain it to. And I just have a little spring clamp here. Clamp the hose in place so that way it doesn't go anywhere. Then I get the siphon started on this end and drain it into the hole that you saw earlier. As it drains, I'm going to scrub off the glass here. This is a different sponge. I use a different one for all the aquariums. So I'm just going to come in here and we're going to scrub off the glass. As the goldfish tank is draining out, we'll come down here to my quarantine tank. And at this point, it's not even a quarantine tank anymore. It's just a grow out. But what I'm going to do is I'll unplug the filter, drain it. Same procedure as the other tank. And as the quarantine tank is draining, I'm going to turn off the filter on my betas tank here and then I'll drain it down into the same set of discharge buckets. About a 55 to 60% water change on that one. And right about the same time the quarantine tank is done. Next up is MJ. Now he's a little bit different because I actually have to take him out of his tank. Now it's gonna be easy because he's hiding under the water right now, trying to not be seen. So it'll be really easy to grab him. Sometimes he'll be alert, but I should be, yep. All right. And then when I hold him, I just kind of grab him at his waist like that so he can't break free. And so with MJ, we just have them in this bucket here, dechlorinated water, of course. And I don't put the lid on all the way. I leave it off kind of like that. And the one time I came downstairs and he was actually just chilling on the floor. Like he must've jumped out and broke this off. So I put a little weight on it now so that way he can't jump out. The challenge of MJ's tank, and it probably looks a lot dirtier than it actually is, is that he doesn't, he eats primarily roaches and he doesn't actually digest their chitin. So, I have to like, that's why I keep it bare bottom. It's easier to just suck all those up. And I know a lot of you guys don't like this setup. I don't much care for it either, but he's on my radar of animals that definitely need an upgrade. So what I do with him is just simply take off the decorations out, minus the filter, and I just suck everything out. Next, we move on to my native tank, and much like the other aquarium, I have to take the lids off first, unplug the filter, and if you just heard that sound right now, that was MJ jumping in the bucket, so he's extremely strong, being a bullfrog. And then, much like the goldfish tank, I'll put this hose in here at about the level that I want to drain it, and go and drain it. 
With this tank, I was having some issues with diatom allergy. So you'll notice that on some of the uh, Nubius heterophylla here, it has some diatom allergy on it. So I'm going to cut off some of the leaves that have algae on them. And I, I had to like increase the flow in here to combat that. And then somebody's been chewing on the leaves. I don't know who. I didn't think they would, but they have been. So all of the tanks are finally drained now and I will introduce you to my jerry rig water fill system. We gotta go upstairs here. Pull the hose up here. Now we're in the bathroom here and what I do is I just hook my hose up to the sink like this using a little bit of electrical tape. I told you it was totally jerry rigged but it's a lot better than climbing up flights of stairs with buckets and of course I will not be in this house for probably more than another six months, so this is not my long-term solution. It gets the job done. So what I'm gonna do is I'll turn this on to what I think is proper. It's usually something like that. Back downstairs, I have this bucket here and the hose is filling up into there. And what I do is I just check the temperature of the water, I'm feeling it. It's warming up, but it feels like it's probably close to right. Then I feel the temperature in my 150 here. Test it with what's coming out of there. It feels pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is add my D-Chlor. With the D-Chlor added, I will now Feel it again just to be sure because sometimes it takes a while for the hot water to heat up so I just kind of stick it up here and of course I'm just going to clamp it into place so that way it doesn't go anywhere. So as the 150 is filling up here I'll tell you guys my logic as to how I fill up my tank. So I start with the 150 then I go on over to my betas tank and then I'll do all of the other ones in no particular order after that. Pretty much I'll probably do the native, then MJ's tank, then the quarantine tank, and then the goldfish tank if I had to guess. But I do the 150 and the betas tank first because they're warm water setups, they're tropical. So I'll most likely use all of the hot water and the water heater as I'm filling up those two. And then I'll move on to all the other ones which are basically kept at room temperature they're cool water set up so it doesn't matter if I had used up all of the hot water by that point so filling up these first then I'll fill up all the other ones when you're doing anything in life it pretty much all comes down to time so you want to be as efficient with it as possible so while the tanks are filling up I'm doing other maintenance and I'm just cleaning off these lids here they tend to get algae on them from time to time no big deal because you can just scrub it off really easily with a little bit of water and an old rag. Now that I got the lids all cleaned off and I've got that plant back in here, I'm going to put them back on so that way once the tank fills back up no one's jumping out. So this tank is just about at the right level. What I'm going to do is take the hose out of here and then we'll transfer it on over to the betas tank. And in the process we get water all over the side there, but that's a given. But this one, of course, I'm going to add the decor in there. But I actually just hold the hose in there since it's only five gallons of water. It fills up fairly quickly. It's funny, the Corys always like when I fill up the water. I think they like the flow. And with them, I got five of them, of course, Emerald Corys. They're going to be going into the 150 at some point in the near future. And I'll probably get them some friends. Maybe I'll get five more. Cap it off at like 10. I think that'd be a good group. Probably not going to see my beta during this process. He's never a happy camper uh, while we're doing the water change. All the tanks are filled up now, so I'm just going to put my hoses back in this bucket here. 
about an hour and a half, two hours later, I finally got all the tanks drained and filled back up with water. I gotta go back and turn on all of the filters and whatnot now. We also gotta put MJ back in his tank, so why don't we go and do that? And now it's time to build a terrarium. As I said, I'm going out to Philadelphia, but I'm also taking a trip out to see one of my friends, and uh, I'm making a terrarium here for him. So, why don't we set on a little time lapse and make a terrarium. Now that the terrarium is complete, the last thing that we have to do other than pack is really just feed all my animals, sit back and relax for a little bit. You may be wondering how do you take care of your animals when you're not here, and technically I don't. My brother is actually going to be looking after them, and it's really quite simple. For the fish, I have all of the food pre-measured, and the goldfish, for example, I have these tetra pond sticks they like these i have them measured out for tuesday wednesday and thursday i'm gonna be here monday and friday so i can take care of all of the animals then so they really only need looked after for those three days so it's pretty simple uh here's my native fish i have all of the cichlid pellets and different things in there these are all the foods that i'm using and then this is the 150. you'll see that i didn't have cups measured out for the quarantine tank or my betas tank since there's very few fish in there i'll just tell my brother you know put a pinch of this in once a day for the beta and then put some of this in for the quarantine tank the only other animals that need to eat while i'm not here are the crested geckos and i just have pangea watermelon and mango and banana and apricot got banana and apricot for henry that seems to be his favorite i have the right amount of water and food here just mix them together and then put them in the geckos tank and remove the old stuff and then of course i have delilah's over here and now they only eat every other day as i said i'm gonna feed them on monday before i leave and then i'll feed them on friday when i come back so really it's just a matter of my brother feeding them on wednesday and then spraying them throughout the week so they have something to drink now that we got all the food prepared for and I'm not here, let's feed all my animals right now. First, I want to start out at Dean's tank. We're not actually going to feed him right away. I'm going to go through here and see if I can find any poop and just do general tank maintenance prior to when I feed him. Because that's typically what I would do. So why don't we open this thing up? And I'm also going to trim some plants that need trimming. You'll see some yellowing on the calathea here. No big deal. It's making way for a lot of new growth right now. So trimming this will only stimulate that growth. One of the things that I really like about this setup is that Dean does exactly what I wanted him to do or really what I planned for him to do. So this log, I set it here to be a basking spot. It's right under his UV light and he basks a lot of the time during the day. So as you can see, he likes hanging out under this leaf. Probably makes him feel secure because he is basking. But there's also the plants under it. So I really like that. Why don't we go and continue to trim this off 
And of course we'll also hook them up with some clean water. This is really the only thing that needs to be thought about while I'm not here. From time to time he will defecate in his water bowl. He doesn't really seem to do it as much since I've moved him into this setup, which is good because then when I'm away he's not going to be crafting in his bowl. But got that situated and we'll add some clean water here. Dechlorinated of course. Almost forgot that I have to water the plants as well, so just pour a little bit of water into there. He's starting to get interested. I feel like he knows something's up. There he is, all, always inquisitive. He's a very inquisitive guy. What do you want to do, man? What are you doing? Yeah, we got to close him in there because I don't want him coming out right now. Now I'm going to go to the rack over here and I'm going to get my African bullfrog and one of my crested geckos. So I've got them both on this table here and I'm just going to leave them here so it's easy for my brother to take care of them but we're going to look at my African bullfrog first. I'm not sure when the last time you guys saw this frog was, but he's gotten very large from whenever I first got him. It's been about a year, and he's at least, I don't know, probably tripled in size. What we're going to do is dump his water bowl out here. And I actually use his water bowl for feeding purposes as well, which you'll see in just a moment. But let's get him out of the dirt here. And I'm actually certain that he's a male now. He croaked at me the other day so it's a good sign that's what I wanted because the males get larger for this species he's officially outgrown his coconut house well he could actually probably fit in it but he can't get through the hole so we're gonna update him with a new house here we'll start out by feeding him some roaches and I'm only gonna feed him a few of these because we're gonna feed him a mouse as well in just a moment so we'll just kinda put these in there to Stimulate his appetite some. These are just babies, of course. So now we'll feed Houdini. He's pretty much on high alert. He was just playing around in his water bowl, which means he's ready to eat. That's typically what he does beforehand. So I've got two, probably about medium sized rats in here. I don't know why, he always pulls them into the water bowl, so I gotta hurry up and <laughs> get his head out of there. Let him eat that. I've got a second one here. I'm just gonna set it right there, and he'll get it at some point. I've showed you guys Dean eating a number of times, so I'm just gonna close this on up. Let him do his thing. I got this new log for him. Actually, I'm going to take him out of this hole that he just worked so hard to dig. I'm sorry, man. Drop him in his water bowl. Uh, I wanted to give him this new hide, but he decided that he had different plans. So, put that in there. I think he'll like it. Pretty much takes up his whole enclosure, but that's primarily where he's going to hang out. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is spray down his tank so he doesn't dry out. Alright, now onto my crested gecko. We are going to first take our old food out of here toss it away and I see her right now but this is where she likes to hide out down in here so here she is right here again I'm not sure when you guys have last seen Delilah but clearly she has gotten much larger she's pretty much fired up right now surprisingly she looks really good um, obviously her tank is just about ready to be cleaned out I haven't done it yet because 
there she's moving into her uh, new enclosure soon so I haven't even bothered with it probably about two weeks but first I want to spray this thing down now that I got this all sprayed down I'm gonna feed her some banana and papaya mix here from Pangea like I said earlier she'll eat whatever it doesn't care at all so put some of this in there And put this in the top compartment there. Normally I don't add a water dish because they tend not to use them, but I'm gonna add one just in case my brother's not watering enough or something like that, but I'm sure it will be fine. So it's gonna be the same deal with Henry here. We'll put some new food in here for him along with a water bowl. And we'll spray down his tank here. You'll notice that Henry's enclosure looks a little bit different. There's not any live plants anymore. And I put them in a different enclosure. In case you wanted to see Henry real quick, he is right there, just hanging out. But I'm gonna let him do his thing. Caring for the new crested gecko for frames is gonna be as simple as what you just saw. My brother's just gonna to have to spray these down once a day, and that's it. So, I really wanted to stock these with the geckos before I went on the trip, but I wanna be here whenever they're in here, so I'll just probably do it about a week or so after I get back, and you know, you can expect that to come up in the near future. So, I'm gonna close these up and we'll move on. Care for this vivarium is also quite simple. It just needs sprayed down once a day, and then my brother's gonna have to throw in crickets at least one of the days that I won't be gone. I'm gonna throw in a bunch of them before I leave, and the fire belly toads, they don't eat them all right away, so there should be enough crickets in there even while I'm not here, but I'll have my brother add additional ones just in case. Now that this tank is all sprayed down, I'm just going to add about two dozen crickets in here. So we pretty much got all the animals in check, got most of the enclosures and everything in check. Really the last thing that I got to do is get packed here, so I'm going to go upstairs and get packed a little bit. We're all packed. All of the animals are good and ready to go. The room is clean. The last thing that I gotta do is feed my fish some frozen food here, and then I'm calling it a day. It was a seriously crazy day. I had so much to do, and it's, you know, whenever I take care of my animals on a day today, it's not hard at all. I'm putting in 15 to 20 minutes max, and then if I'm trying to do that all in one day, it does take longer than it normally does, plus it's like, stress on me to get that all done but it's worth it I love keeping all my animals and like I've said to you guys many times before I don't recommend that everybody go and do this if you personally think you can handle it go for it but I by no means think that anybody should be keeping this many animals but we're gonna feed my fish and then we'll kind of just go from there so first up is the 150 what I have here are a few cubes of Daphnia some blood worms and beef heart. Now I'll move on to my 90 gallon native tank. In here I have blood worms and primarily beef heart.
For the beta and my quarantine tank, I have some blood worms and a bit of Daphnia. Keep in mind that there are five emerald quarries in here as well, so that may seem like a lot just for a single beta, but that's primarily for the quarry cats. The beta is being snooty. Uh and that about does it everyone. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little behind the scenes of how I get my animal room ready to go on a trip or even if I were going on vacation it would be the same exact process. I look out because my brother knows how to take care of all of this stuff so I just tell him what to do and I know that everything's in good hands. As always I appreciate you and I thank you for watching. If you're not yet subscribed and you want to see more stuff about my animals, terrariums, I do all kinds of different stuff. I'm not really focused on one thing but terrariums kind of are my specialty definitely subscribe if you like the video hit it with a thumbs up and that's pretty much all i gotta say thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time peace